Hi, everyone in person. It feels like there's a lot of us in person today, like way in the back. Maybe you're just more spread out, but it feels really good in here today. Hi, and hi online. Um, happy if you're in Madison, it's sunny. It's great outside. So I thought we would work a little bit on uh, hip and leg mobility today. Is that a yes? Okay, good. Uh, a little gentle, a little softer, okay? Um, because I'm gonna be selfish, my legs really hurt. <laughs> um, so we'll just do a little leg, hip, low back work, and I'm sure we'll throw in some shoulder stuff as well. So um, as always, let's start uh, on a, our backs or in a nice comfortable seated shape. Um, gentle reminder that you have total agency and control over the whole 45 minute practice. So, you know, if something does not feel safe or comfortable, uh, physically, energetically, please always back out and take care of yourself. That's really what is most important is how you feel. Okay. So how you feel is priority. And with that, we'll settle into our shape, it's intentionally settling and slowing down. As we take a couple of longer, deeper breaths, feeling the support the stability of the ground beneath you. If you feel you need a little more grounding support, you can let your arms come down on the floor. If you're sitting, you can let your fingertips or your hands come down on the sides of you. Just trying to get as many points of contact with the earth as you can. And then gently drawing your awareness inward, this practice of embodiment coming into our bodies with a sense of curiosity and kindness. And as we come into our bodies, let's just notice how we're starting to feel here. Is there a part of your body calling to you? Is there a part of your body that feels really comfortable, spacious, relaxed? Part of your body that feels strong? Right? Maybe there's multiple parts that are feeling relaxed and strong and comfortable. Maybe there's some parts that are feeling tight. Maybe some parts that are feeling a little weaker, maybe needing your attention in a different way. It's taking a moment to Bring your awareness to the parts of comfort and ease and also the parts that might be a little tense, the parts that might not feel as comfortable. Just coming into your body saying hello. And let's show some gratitude for all of the parts, the parts that are comfortable and even the parts that might not be as comfortable. Showing gratitude for the strength of our bodies, Showing gratitude to ourselves for showing up, taking care of ourselves, 
having a practice Maybe also some deep gratitude to your breath, feeling that inhale and that exhale. We'll pause for about five breaths. And with awareness, coming back, what's it feel like to take a little longer inhale, a little longer exhale? And then if you're sitting, just coming onto your backs. And for the last several weeks, we've been talking a lot about engaged breathing. So Let's take about five breaths to reconnect to that idea of engaged breathing. So as you exhale, bringing your awareness down to your lower ribs into your navel area, you can imagine you had a cummerbund or a corset on. And when we exhale, that cummerbund corset feels a little tighter. And that's that contraction. And then when we inhale, might feel a little bit like your cummerbund corset's getting a little bit more spacious or loose, but there's still tone. That's that eccentric contraction of the abdominals. So we want to feel tone and strength through the cummerbund area, front side, all the way around to the back. And then sometimes I say, draw your navel down and in. And when we do that, just being mindful that this is a more muscular. So if you're pulling your navel down towards your spine, you're not tucking your tailbone and pushing your spine or imprinting your low back, okay? So we wanna try and maintain that physical neutral pelvis and lower lumbar spine. And then the second part of that is when you're exhaling, drawing your navel towards your spine, you're not like rock solid hard, okay? It's like you still need to feel the breath, okay? We don't wanna like lock down, okay? We wanna still feel breath movement. So we'll take two more breaths. And then let's bring your hands just to your hip creases. So right there where your leg comes into your hip socket, just put your hand there. And we're just gonna gently pick up your right knee and bring your right knee up over your right hip. You wanna point your toe. And we wanna wake up uh, this idea that your leg hooks into your core. Okay, so your leg hooks into your cummerbund abdominal area. Okay, so as you point your right toe and you take your right knee away and your toe, you're gonna tap and bring your knee back up and try and feel a little more like you're doing a little bit of a crunch feel, not using the leg as much as you might connect the leg into the core. More core, less hip. So little less tightness in the hip and do two more really slowly. Imagining your right leg is extra heavy. And then your right leg will come down to the floor. Can you take your left knee now, bring your left knee over your left hip. So these are knee folds from Pilates class. We're gonna point your left toe and just try and connect your leg a little more into your abdominals. And you keep some ease in that left hip, less grip, and feel how the abdominals help connect the leg 
into the core. The leg is an extension of the core. You can go really slow and you can imagine your leg is like 20 or 30 pounds. Two more. And then the next time your left toes come down, we're gonna pause. Just let your left heel come down and take two or three breaths back to engaged abdominal breathing. And then bringing your right knee back up over your right hip, we're gonna pull the right knee in a little bit. Now, when your right knee comes in, you might feel your pelvis, like do a posterior tilt, your low back come into the floor, that's okay. Then we're just gonna roll the leg around in the hip socket. Now, as you roll the leg around, try not to move the left side of your body. Try to really keep your left hip, left side of the rib cage, left shoulder down. And then you can go the opposite direction. Just moving that leg around, almost like you're flossing the leg in the socket, looking, feeling for some range of motion. And then you can bring that right knee back into your chest. And then with control, lower the right knee, lower the right foot all the way to the floor. Come back to your baseline. Constructive rest, bring your left knee in, stabilize through the right side and little leg circles in that hip socket. Nice and slow, three in each direction. You feel how the leg can move around in the socket you can keep that core area nice and stable and strong. Just moving the leg around in the pelvis. And then the left leg can come back. When you're ready, lowering the knee foot with control all the way down. And then we'll take two or three breaths. And just come back to your baseline. Great, and then we're gonna slowly roll all the way on up to sitting and bring your legs out in front of you. So with your legs out in front, you can put your uh, toes down on the floor and really push a little more through your big toe. So when uh, these hip flexor muscles that live here get really tight, they pull up like this, right? And we kind of pull up and round forward. So we're gonna try and feel these thigh bone muscles uh, and like your thigh bones themselves push down into the floor more. So you can have this feeling like your thigh bones are really heavy and pushing down. And then your shins here have this sense of going forward out like that. Instead of this can pulling in contraction like this, we wanna feel more like spacious and long like this, okay? So from there, a little easier is gonna be holding onto the back of the leg. More challenging right off the bat is your arms are out in front and then we sit back. And then using the core, more than your hip flexors, you're gonna pull yourself up. So it might feel like you're doing a little bit of a sit up and you're gonna sit up. So you can hold on to the back of the legs. As you go back, think of your thigh bones going down, your shins going out, and use your core like a sit up, pull yourself up. Shoulders stay down out of your ears, okay? Use the back of the legs, right? It's a little bit more today about trying to feel less tension and grip in your hip, okay? So the more we can start to wake up and feel this coming from your abdominals, the less we're gonna just keep gripping 
and over tensing in the front of the hip. So let's try about three more. When you're done with three, we'll sit up and we'll pause for a moment. So when you come up to this place, just sit and take a moment to feel your feet on the ground. Shoulders can relax down out of your ears. Chest a little softer. Whew. Feel engaged breathing. Long low back. Now, everyone's really different. How far can you sit back before you feel the front of your hip get really, really tight? When you feel the front of the hip get really tight, stop and then soften the shoulders. Either hold on to the back of the legs or bring your arms out in front of you. And then pick a challenge. You can stay right here or you could pick up one leg. You could maybe pick up both legs. Take a couple rests. Use your core more than your hips if you can. Try. And then one leg comes down. Woo. The other leg comes down and pull yourself all the way up. That was really hard. Whew. All right, let's come on to tabletop stretch. So when we do table, we're gonna work on stretching what we just uh, maybe without knowingly tightened, <laughs> all right? So in table, uh, you know, give yourself a couple of breaths to build your strong table. So we're looking for symmetry from the ears to the shoulders to the hips. And then you're gonna take your uh, hip creases in your butt and push back. And then you're gonna ground and pull and push down and draw your core, draw your shoulders forward, maybe over your wrists a little bit. We're going to do several of these, maybe six to eight. So. You could incrementally look for more range of motion as you go back and pull yourself forward. You're also easing into the strength of the shoulder all the way through the wrist. And then when you get back to tabletop, pause for just a moment. We're going to throw in a little added challenge. So coming to the shape of your spine, resist moving your spine. So that means when you push your hips back, try not to just right away do like a cat. Really try and resist moving into cat. Your spine's gonna have to do a little bit of low back rounding, but you're gonna try and resist that, not just automatically go into it. And then as you pull yourself forward, don't just drop your pelvis to the floor, really resist. Try to keep your spine in neutral as long as you can as you do three more of these. Like how far can you push your hips back until you notice your spine changes shape? How far can you pull your shoulders forward before you notice your spine changes shape? And then we come all the way back to tabletop and curl your toes and we'll meet up and back and downward facing dog. So bending your knees as much as you need to in your downward facing dog. So you can really take those hip creases, take your thigh bones, upper thigh bones and push them way back. Bend your knees as much as you need to and try and let your head hang. We'll be quiet for three breaths. And using your next exhale to help you stay in your body. Walk your hands and feet together with the next breath. And bend your knees 
and come all the way on up to standing. And then let your arms come down standing mountain for two breaths. So when we're nice and quiet in our breathing, that gives you time to come back to listen to your body breathe. All right, so let's bring your hands back to your hip bones. So you have hip bones, right? Which your two hip bones make your pelvis and then you have leg bones. Okay, so we're gonna try to keep your hip bones really stable facing, you know, kind of forward and symmetrical. We're gonna pick up your left leg and you're gonna swing your left leg back behind you to build a high lunge. Then just come back into your hips, try and make them symmetrical. So they're pretty level. And then your ribs, your shoulders and your ears stack on top. So being mindful that you're not pushing your rib cage way far forward, ribs. So back to engaged breathing, all right? Then you're keeping your pelvis set, just pause. Remember, we could soften the shoulders and the throat. You can bend your right knee as much as is comfortable for your ankle and your knee. Your left heel stays lifted, and then you're going to push this left thigh bone way back. Just the thigh bone, not the hip. So you're trying to get some stretch from your left pelvic crest down to your knee. So push that left thigh bone back. Little more balance challenge, hands can come to your chest. Little more balance challenge without pushing your rib cage forward. Core helps stabilize more as your arms come up. Take a full inhale and then exhale, step your back foot forward. Two breaths in silence to come back into your body to hear and listen to your breath. When you're ready, right foot steps back. High back heel, take your time. Hips level, ribs, shoulders, ears, and your awareness. Engaged breathing. Just take your right thigh bone and push it back. Heel stays lifted. So you can feel maybe a little bit of stretch through that back right hip, hands together, or maybe a little more balance, core challenge, arms come up, three breaths, press that right thigh bone back, lift the hips. Exhale, step both feet together. Two breaths, just listen to your breathing. And then spread your toes as wide as you can. So you get this like big grippy toe action happening. One more time, step your left foot all the way back, build a high lunge. Okay, this time with your high lunge, though your toes are wide like webs. Okay, hips are a little more level facing forward, ribs, hip, shoulders, also most called my shoulders, my hips. So find this, maybe take your arms up. Now, if you want a little different challenge, bend both knees, lower down and come back up. Last one. Now both knees can have a little bit of a bend, right? If you're at home or even in the room and you feel unbalanced, go stand by the wall, use a wall, use a chair. You're gonna take your hips and tip them back a little bit. Now, when the hips tip back, find that engaged breathing. Ribs need to stay down, need to stay long in the low back. Two breaths, hands can come together at your hips. Exhale, do your little crunch to bring the shoulders back up over the hips and step both feet woo, together and take a couple of breaths. Listen to your breath.
So if we're really tight through the front of the legs, right through here, okay, when we take the pubic bone forward, we tip the hips back. It can be really easy to also splay the ribs and just push the ribs out. So that's where this over and over rib knitting comes in because we don't want to hurt the low back by just blasting the rib cage forward, okay? So as we get longer through here, we have to stay also really strong from say the knees to the hips to the ribs, right? We don't wanna just blast things out. And that gets a little more challenging when we're balancing in a lunge. So here we go, right leg steps back. Build your lunge, hips, ribs, shoulders. Right, when you have that set, go up and down a couple of times. What's that feel like? I don't know about anyone else's side is so much easier. Woo. And then when both knees have a little bend, pause, knit the ribs, lengthen up through your low back. So you wanna keep length in the low back as you tip the pelvis back. Maybe keeping the pelvis tip back, you take your right thigh bone, push it back a little bit. Feel that length through the front back right hip there. Hands can come to your chest, two breaths. Then like a crunch, exhale, shoulders come back up and step both feet together. Woo, settle. We'll be quiet so you can hear your body take about three breaths. Feeling your breath without looking down at your feet. Can you get your toes really spacious again? Feeling your body breathe. Soft knees, soft hips, shoulders. You can just relax down out of your ears. Full exhale. With your next exhale, sweeping your arms out to come up. Exhale, bend your knees and pull the hip creases back to fold over. So you're hinging at the hip first, come over, fingertips can come down and then we step the feet back. You pick, maybe you want a down dog or a tabletop. Maybe you wanna rest in a child's pose. So finding one of these shapes for about five breaths, and the shape allows you to come back into your body with awareness, not distraction. So come in with awareness. See if you can follow a couple breaths, noticing how you're feeling. How are you feeling? Great, with your next exhale, coming back down to a table. Nice and strong, build your tabletop and then we're gonna push the hip creases back and then pull yourself forward again. I'm gonna do two more. So similar to the last ones, try and resist moving your spine. How far can you go back without moving your spine? How far forward can you come without moving your spine? You can move your spine. I don't want you to be confused. Like, oh my gosh, we can't move our spines. Just have that awareness. Like how far, when you go back, when do you feel your low back move? When you come forward, when do you notice your back, your spine move? Great. And then back to tabletop. And then back to one more round, downward facing dog. And then we're gonna exhale, walk your feet up to your hands. Come up to your finger pads or your fingertips or bring your hands onto your thigh bones, either one. 
find like a standing table and just see if you can feel your heels push down. Shift a little bit of weight forward, big spread out toes, little hamstring stretch. Exhale, fold and step your left foot all the way back. Lower your left knee. Again, we're just gonna pause right here for just a moment. And then we're gonna curl your back toes and we're gonna use your left hamstring. So the back of the leg, you're gonna lift your hamstrings up to the ceiling and then let your left knee bend again. Two more times. So lift your hamstrings, like your hamstrings are going up to the ceiling and lowering your left knee. Good, last one. Can keep your toes on the floor. Good, and then you have just like a lunge, right? You're like in a runner's lunge. And then imagine your right leg pulling back into the hip socket and your back leg pulling into the hip socket. Nice and strong through your upper back. Exhale, left knee comes down. Great, and take a couple of breaths. We're gonna turn it into a twist. Your left hand comes by your right big toe. And you just twist to the right. If it works, your right arm comes up to the ceiling. Two breaths. Right arm comes back down. Back to your runner's lunge. And then shift the weight forward. Step your left foot forward to meet your right. Exhale, slowly come all the way on up. Big Mountain stretch at the top. Exhale, fold forward. Right leg steps all the way back. Right knee comes down. So you're in a low lunge, fingered pads, fingertips on the floor. Okay, keep your right toes down on the floor and just lift your knee up from your hamstring. So you're just working a little bit on the hamstring and that back right leg. Bending and straightening that back knee, exactly. And then when that right knee is up off the floor, pause, nice and strong through your upper back, engaged breathing. Let your right knee come down if you want. Right hand by the big left toe and we twist to the left, lunge twist. Two breaths. Exhale, left hand back. Right leg straightens, knee lifts up, shift the weight. Right leg floats to meet the left. Exhale, come all the way on up. Hands to your side. Three breaths in silence to come back to listen to your body breathe. Next exhale, sweep your arms out and up. Bend your knees as much as you need from your hip creases. Pull the hip creases back to fold. Step back, downward facing dog. Bend your knees, take your upper thigh bones and really push them back. Great, and then exhale, lower down to your knees. Good, push your butt back a little bit. Pull yourself forward. So back to the idea of engaged breathing, core stability. You could push yourself way back and if you feel Right. You're coming forward and you'd like to come up to say like an upward facing dog, like more of a swan from Pilates, feel free, okay? Paying really close attention as you go back in flexion and as you come up in extension, 
that you're getting pelvic extension. So that means your pelvis is coming forward and you're keeping your low back really long. You're lifting up and then you're pressing back. One more. Great, and then we'll just press back to a child's pose and take about five breaths. And then notice and feel your breath. And then we'll come all the way back to tabletop. And we're just gonna sit back on our heels for just a moment. So sitting back on your heels for just a moment. Um, if, this isn't un if this is really uncomfortable, you can always sit crisscross applesauce, right? Or stand, just find a comfortable shape. So from our belly button down to our pubic bone, if we take that into our low back, Okay, we wanna stay pretty steady through here. We don't want a lot of like undo pushing and hinging in the lower lumbar, okay? So if we're really tight here, it's really easy to over hinge in the low back because these muscles don't necessarily wanna give, right? They don't necessarily wanna like eccentrically contract and get long and stretch. They're tight. So then we'll just force it in the low back. So as I look around, just be really mindful, right, through your low back that when we're doing pelvic extension, so pelvic extension is taking your pelvis back in space and getting stretch and length a little more through where you're really tight, that you're not just hinging in the low back. So we have to keep that navel drawing in and length in the low back, okay? So this is really important in bridge pose, okay? So we're gonna go into bridge. So we'll come onto your back. Make sense to everyone in the room? Okay, so when you come onto your back for a bridge, bring your arms down by your side. Palms can be down. You could hold on to the side of the mat. Heels a little more in line with your sit bones. Big, wide, webby toes. Okay. So we're going to press down and just lift the pelvis up in one unit this time. Now, when you press your pelvis up, find your pubic bone. Imagine your pubic bones going up to the ceiling. Imagine your hamstrings are pushing through your thigh bones up to the ceiling. So maybe you can feel a little more of the hamstring glute butt connection. Now exhale and get your engaged breathing on and feel a little more like your navel is going down into your spine to protect and lengthen your low back. And then lower back down. Give yourself a couple of breaths. Press into your heels. Lift your pelvis. Imagine your pubic bone, we're going up towards the ceiling. Navel to spine, engaged breathing. Fabulous. Now, can you add that idea of length? Like your knees are gonna go forward over your toes towards the front of your mat. With lots of control, lower back down and just give yourself two or three breaths. Fabulous. If you want a lot more challenge, walk your feet out a little bit farther away from your uh, heels towards the front of your mat, okay? 
push into your heels, big wide spider web toes and lift your pelvis. This is gonna work your hamstrings in a little different length. Knit the ribs, engage core breathing. Long, low belly from your navel to your pubic bone, long, low back. Maybe the greatest challenge that we have is to let go of holding this so much from the throat. Let go of holding this really tight from your chest. Try and not hold this so much from your face. Three breaths. With control, as you feel your exhale lowering all the way down, we'll take two or three breaths in silence. And then out, stretch your left leg, bring your right knee all the way back up into your chest. Remember this pose, shape, stretch from the very beginning of class. Roll your right thigh bone around. Go each direction just two times, keeping stability through the left side. And then bend your left knee and come into your supine hip stretch here. So you're gonna take your right foot, right ankle over onto your left thigh bone and pick up your left leg if you want and just do your hip stretch, your piriformis stretch, three breaths. Your right toes are up towards the ceiling, getting into that right hip. Soften where you feel you can soften. Keep strong where we need to keep strong. Exhale, undo this and come back to constructive rest. Two breaths in silence. Left knee comes all the way into your chest, right leg extends. Two little leg hip circles each direction. After your two leg circles, bending your right knee, left foot crosses over the right thigh bone for your hip piriformis stretch. Left toes can come up towards the ceiling, stretching through that outer left hip. All exhale brings both feet back down to the floor. Walk your feet out about as wide as your mat and then just let the knees and the legs fall out to the right and then to the ceiling and out to the left. So just really gently swing the legs side to side. One more time to each side. Fabulous. And then the knees come back to constructive rest pose. We'll do a full body stretch. Try and keep your ribs down, spine heavy. And then we always take the last couple minutes for self care. So Giving yourself a couple minutes here. Maybe you want to just hang out and relax, daydream and breathe. Maybe you're going to use your breath as an anchor, meditating, staying in your body. Maybe you want some gentle stretching. So we take the next few minutes here in silence. We can hear the breath. Feel the breath move through the body.
Noticing your present time experience as you come back to this breath. Just letting go. What does this breath feel like? And then taking a little longer, deeper inhale. And practicing a little longer, deeper exhale as you let the breath out. And drawing your right knee into your chest. And drawing your left knee into your chest, rocking a little bit side to side. And then we're gonna roll over to the easiest side and come on up to sitting. Pause, interlace the hands really quick and just do a big stretch, a little side to side. Yay, happy Tuesday, everyone. Thanks for showing up online. Thanks for being here in person. See you Friday, I hope. Have a good one. Thank you, everybody.